Here's how you can create a modular and versatile status effect system for your games in Unity. This is how it will work. Every time an attack lands on the enemy, this status effect icon will appear on top of the enemy to show the build-up amount. When this build-up amount reaches the threshold, that particular status effect will activate. Each status effect can have different behaviors. For example, a fire status effect might do a tick of damage over time when it's active. An ice status effect might slow down the enemy or it might be as specific as sending these balls towards other enemies whenever it receives an additional damage. As you can see, it's super customizable and versatile. And I'm using this system in my upcoming game Rogue Resonance, which by the way, you can wishlist it on Steam. So before we begin coding, let's understand how it works on a high level. We will be using scriptable objects, which if you don't know, are like data containers. Each scriptable object will store data and methods related to a status effect. Now, since we will have some methods that will be similar across multiple status effects, we can have a base scriptable objects class to store all these common functionalities in there. Now, to actually control and keep track of these status effects, each character or enemy needs to have a status effect manager. This will hold all active status effects and will be responsible for calling the update method for each status effect, let's say every 0.1 second, or if you want it to be dependent on the number of turns in case of a turn based game, then you can set it to that. It will also communicate with the status effect UI component to show, hide and update the UI for all the status effects. I hope you get the idea. Now let's begin with the implementation. So I have this scene set up with a player game object and an enemy game object. Now I'm assuming you might already have a similar setup. If not, and you would like to follow along, I have attached the project files in the description. Just to give an overview, the player has this player script attached, which contains code for moving the player and spawning these projectiles. And the projectile has a projectile script, which is responsible for moving the projectile to the closest enemy. It also has this damage caster script, which would do the damage if an enemy comes contact with it. The enemy has a health component and a health bar attached to it as well. This is the health script that I have. Cool. Now let's start with the status effect UI. Start by creating a canvas and rename it to status effect canvas. Then add a child game object and rename it to status effect group. Then create an image game object and rename it to status effect template. Uh, as we can see, the canvas is huge right now. So let's first change the canvas render mode to world space. Set the position to zero and scale to 0.1. Now under status effect group, change the dimensions to zero and add a layout group component. Set cell size to five and make these changes to properly align it. Then add two more image child game objects and name them status active timer and icon. Then set the size of the first one to four and the other one to three. Now assign these sprites to the image component. Adjust the size as per your need. For status effect template, Change the image type to filled and origin to top. Do the same for status active timer. As you can see by changing the fill value, we will be able to control the status buildup amount. Now if you duplicate status effect template, you can see they align very nicely. 
let's delete other copies for now since we will be adding and removing these through code so let's create a script called status effect ui and add it to status effect group open it in visual studio we want to create a function to control the build up amount and the active timer it takes build up amount and duration as parameters add another function which will show the ui when the status effect activates and another one when it deactivates we will fill these in a minute before that let's create a variable to store reference to the template we created earlier now grab a reference to the main camera and add this line in the update function since this is in 3d it will make it so that the status effect ui is always facing the camera if you have a 2d project then you probably don't need this before continuing with the ui script let's add another script call it status effect so and open it make sure it's an abstract class and it's a scriptable object then add an enum which will hold all the possible status effects go back to status effect ui script and add another class on top call it status effect cache and add these data members we will be using this to store reference to the icon build up and duration image for each status effect ui also add this constructor now add a dictionary to hold the status effect cache then in the create status icon we will be checking if a status effect icon is already created or not if it's created we will enable it and return it if not then we basically create a copy of the template and store all the references in the cache this is to ensure that we can reuse an already instantiated status effect template for a particular status effect rather than creating a duplicate each time Oh and we also need another dictionary to store the icon sprite itself. We will assign it in the inspector later on. We also need to add status effect type in the status effect so file. So let's do that. Now you might notice that we can't really assign the sprites in the inspector. This is because Unity doesn't serialize dictionaries by default. We could write custom inspector code, but let's avoid that for now and use the GDX package or if you have Odin you can use that or you can have any other approach to serializing the dictionaries. Anyway, I will be using the GDX package for now. Once it's installed, we just need to change this to serializable dictionary. Now we can assign the sprites for the various status effects. Now let's move on to on active status function. from here call the create status icon function let's cache that first in the status icon dictionary then call the update builder function with build up amount 
and duration as zero. Here, for some reason, I had created two functions for update earlier. So I'm removing that. Anyway, in the update function, we just need to update the fill amount for both build up and active duration. Then finally, for the on deactivate status, we just need to hide the game object. That's all for the status effect UI script. We will be hooking these three functions with status manager later on. Let's open status effect SO file for now. Start by creating these variables. I hope the names of these variables are self explanatory. But once we use them in methods, it should be more clear. Then we can add those lifecycle methods related to when the status effect activates or when it deactivates and when the buildup is added. Let's start with the add buildup function. Then add this boolean variable which we can set to true when the status effect is building up after an attack has been done. Also add another boolean is effect active which will be true if status effect is actually active. Then we check whether the current threshold is greater than or equal to activation threshold. If it is, then we call apply effect function. Let's code that next. Set the is effect active to true and remaining duration to active duration. By the way, active duration is how long the status should remain active. Also, we can instantiate a visual effect that should play while the status effect is active. Now let's move on to update call method. This will accept two parameters, target and tick amount, which will basically be how much time has passed since the last update call. This method will sort of work like Unity's update method. We will be calling this method from status manager every tick amount seconds. Here, all we are doing is reducing the current threshold and remaining duration by tick amount depending on whether the status effect is active or not and setting is active or is build up shown to false if less than zero now there is another update effect function which might confuse you but it's there to give us more control as to how frequently you want to run the update effect function For example, for the fire status effect, a small tick of damage needs to be done every half second. Then we can simply set the tick interval to 0.5 seconds. This way, the code will simply do the damage through the update effect call in the derived class. We will actually implement this in a bit. But for now, let's add this tick interval variable and this condition to run update effect every tick interval. Now let's implement the remove effect method. Here we simply reset all these variables and also destroy the status effect visual. Now we just need a few more methods. This function to check when we can remove status effect. That is when the status effect is not active and build up is also not shown. We also have these methods to get the normalized values for the current threshold and the current duration. Now let's create the status effect manager file to tie everything together. In this file, create these three functions. On status trigger build up method will be called from other files whenever we want to add build up for a particular status effect. 
create effect object function is for internal use to cache status effect so similar to how we handled in the ui script then we have update effect which will execute the update call method for all the enabled effects then we finally have the remove effect before implementing these let's first add these variables on top these three dictionaries we have this status effect to apply a dictionary which will be used to store the status effect so for each status effect type we will assign this in the specter in a bit but first let's implement these methods in the on status trigger build up method if the effect has not started build up which also means it's not active currently then we create a new instance of that status effect and add it to the enabled effects we also need to communicate to the status effect ui script to display the build up which we will implement in a bit and if the status effect is already in a build up state then we just keep adding more build up if it's already active then we can for example do a additional damage but this is up to you moving on to create effect object we simply instantiate the status effect scriptable object so that each character can have a separate instance of the status effect and then we cache it so we can avoid instantiating it twice for the same effect moving on to update effect method we are iterating through all the active status effects and calling the update method for each instance and we also check if we can remove the effect then in remove effect we just need to call the remove effect method in scriptable object and remove it from enabled effects dictionary and the last thing we need to do is call this update effects method from unity's update function every tick interval by the way if you want it to change based on the number of turns you can call update effects method whenever turn value updates instead of every 0.1 seconds as i am doing here now finally let's hook up the status effect ui using events I have these three for active update and deactivate effect. Let's invoke these events where we commented earlier and pass the required parameters. then head over to the status effect ui file here we will need a reference to status effect manager so let's grab it by using get component in parent method now hook up the methods we created earlier like this Cool. Now let me show you how easy it is to create status effects with this system. Create a new script, name it burn status effect so, and this asset menu line on top, 
and set the base class as status effect so override the update effect to reduce the health every update tick interval as you can see we need a reference to the health component here so we can just go to the base class and create another function to set up the data after which we can use it in the derived status effect class now let's create a scriptable object for the fire status effect by navigating to custom status effect and burn status effect set some of these values i'm also assigning the visual effect prefab and don't forget to drag and drop the scriptable object to status effect manager script and it's not working that's because we didn't even call the build up method when enemy takes the damage so in the health script let's fetch a reference to the status effect manager script and call this after we deduct the health then let's create a class to hold the damage data which will have damage amount effect type and build up amount also create a constructor for it and finally update at all the places we are calling this function make sure we update the damage data in the inspector now let's try running the game as you can see on every hit build up increases and once it reaches the threshold the burn status effect activates we see the vfx playing and the tick damage is also being done and once it's over vfx is removed and tick damage stops now let's add another status effect first organize the files a bit then create ice status effect so file and open it and add this line on top in here we just need to change the movement multiplier which is in the enemy controller and in the remove effect function we just need to reset it also if you have character animations you can set the animator speed to multiplier value let's create a scriptable object for it modify these values and drag and drop it in the status effect manager also update the damage data for the ice projectile prefab and let's run it and as you can see the enemy slows down when the status effect activates now let's say if you want to add the status effect to another enemy you can create a prefab for the status effect canvas game object then drag and drop it to the new enemy and then you can copy the status effect manager component from the first enemy and paste it onto the new enemy You could also have a different variation for the status effects by creating a new status effect scriptable object with different values. For example, boss or elite enemies might have more resistance or might require more build up for the status to activate. As we can see, it's very easy to add variations without much effort. Let's see a few more variations that I created. I have this electric effect which when active sends these electric balls to closer enemies on additional hits i also have this contact poison effect which spreads to close by enemies in a range 
then I also have this effect which does massive damage in an area. Another one that completely faces the enemy. If you want to see how these are implemented, you can get them by supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. You also get all these visual effects which you are free to use in your own projects. Links in the description. And finally, please leave a like if you found this video helpful and maybe subscribe for more content like this. Thanks a lot for watching.